Hello everyone. Today we will have our first session on, on Volti optimization and this session will focus on control channel congestion handling because in our last session we discussed about the control channel congestion and we found out that the biggest bottleneck that we have for Volti congestion or Volti capacity limit is the PDCCH which is the control channel. So let's see what we can do to handle control channel congestion in Volti. So firstly, uh, let's understand uh, how the normal Volti scheduling works. So under a normal scenario, a user will get a PDCCH allocation, this over here. So it will read the PDCCH and that will tell the user where its Volti packet is. So for instance, the user re reads this PDCCH and finds out the Volti packet on the PDSCH over here. Then it waits for 20 milliseconds and reads again the PDCCH and finds the next Volti packet which is around here. Again after 20 milliseconds the next Volti packet will come and it will be al also the user will need to read the PDCCH to get that value and so on and so forth. So this is how a normal Volti scheduling works. So every 20 milliseconds a user needs to read the PDCCH to find out where the Volti packet is located. Now, um, what we can do to minimize this PDCCH overhead, the best feature, uh, the, the best uh, counter strategy would be to enable semi-persistent scheduling, which is also known as SPS. And what SPS does, it works as follows. So a user will get a PDCCH, telling it that this is where your Volti packet is. And it will also tell the UE that the, your Volti packet the next Volti packet would also be at the same location. You don't need to reach the PDCCH uh, to find that. So the user will get the first Volti packet. After 20 milliseconds, it will go and read at the same time, at the same location uh, for the next Volti packet. It will not read the PDCCH. The PDCCH is not used by this user. Again, it will wait for another 20 milliseconds. The next packet is again at the same location and the UE does not need to read the PDCCH, it directly knows where the packet is and so on and so forth. So what happened here is that the PDCCH is only used one time. After that, the UE does not need a PDCCH, but the UE already knows that the Volti packet is at the same location always. So every 20 milliseconds, it will just read at the same location and fetch the next Volti packet. So in that case, the PDCCH utilization will go down, our control channel congestion will go down. Now, what are the drawbacks if we go with this approach? The first one is that uh, if, if you look over here, we can see that the, the user can get Volti packet here, next one is here, next one is there, next one is there and so on. So it is changing in, um, in the frequency domain. It's changing its location, right? So this means that every time uh, that the system, the E node B, can change the packet's location, it can change the packet's modulation. So for instance, the user was in good conditions here, then it went indoors or it went away from the cell, it was in bad conditions, so the system can change uh, the Volti modulation. So for instance, it was getting 16 QAM here, it might be getting QPSK here, again QPSK, then maybe 16 QAM again. So it can change that, right? So uh, that means that the, the system can react to channel changes. That means our Volti capacity, our Volti uh, link budget and our, our Volti quality will remain consistent. It will remain good. But in this case, what will happen if the user is in good conditions here and it got 16 QAM, again it got 16 QAM, again it got 16 QAM and it will keep getting the same modulation every time because there is no PDCCH to change it. So the user will keep getting the same modulation all along. And if the user, let's say over here, it goes into bad coverage, it will still get 16 QAM. It might not be able to decode it because it is now in bad coverage. It needs QPSK modulation, which is more robust. So in this case, this technique will not be reactive. It will be, uh, it will be too slow to react to channel changes. That is one of the drawbacks when we use SPS. Now, um, to handle that, what should happen is that any uh, system should only choose users which are in good coverage, good radio conditions, 
or which are in stable radio conditions so that you only choose those users who um, who can take the best uh, gain from this semi system scheduling if you take a user that is in bad radio conditions it's possible that because of fluctuations it will not be able to decode multiple packets and it will uh, it will cause bad quality more packet loss poor blur so the uh, the volte call service the volte call quality will be bad so in that case the sps will not work properly so um, so many uh, systems do what they have is that if the uh, user shows high blur they move from sps back to normal scheduling and if the user is in stable condition for a certain period of time they move back to sps in that case you can then get the best of both worlds and you can find out uh, the optimum threshold and you can reduce the pdcch and the control channel in um, congestion so this is the SPS. Another one that we can do uh, is uh, called packet bundling. Now again, as we saw before, the normal scheduling can work. Every user will read a PDCCH and then it will get a Volte packet based on that, right? Now Volte packet is coming every 20 milliseconds. So what we can do with a packet bundling approach is that we can uh, put two packets together and then the user reads the PDCCH and gets two packets. Now because it has received two packets, it does not need to get a packet after every 20 milliseconds, but it can get the packet after every 40 milliseconds. So for instance, these two packets will be bundled together over here. Similarly, no packet over here. The next packet will be bundled with these two packets and the user will get two packets together over here. So there will be a 40 millisecond period instead of 20 millisecond what will happen is that the user will not need a pdcch here and here so our pdcch utilization is halved it is it has gone down by 50 percent so our control channel congestion can go down by 50 percent using this approach now um, what can be the drawbacks on this one the drawbacks can be that for instance this packet is now delayed by 20 milliseconds right similarly this packet is now again delayed by 20 milliseconds because it will be bundled with this packet over here right so it can increase delay now volte packets they should be transmitted uh, within 100 milliseconds that is normal requirement so if you increase delay um, for volte packets there is a possibility that you increase your packet loss because after 100 milliseconds a volte packet might be dropped so that is something else that we will talk about when we talk about the next volte optimization sessions about packet loss um, optimization and how to uh, to how to do workarounds on that but for now just uh, to understand so this scenario can increase uh, packet latency for volte and that can cause uh, packet loss in certain con certain certain conditions so but again, this can uh, reduce your uh, PDCCH and control level congestion. So both uh, SPS and packet bundling approach can reduce control channel congestion. However, what it means is that it is now increasing your PDSCH utilization, right? So it's quite possible that uh, the next limit might become the PDSCH. So in the next session, we'll talk about some of the optimization techniques to handle the PDSCH congestion uh, when it comes to Volte and I will show you what can we do uh, to minimize that. So thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Um, do subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.